Listen to that. When was the last time you heard nothing? Our world is a constant assault to the ears. For instance, did you know being exposed to sound over 85 decibels for prolonged periods of time can damage your hearing? To give you an idea of how loud that is, your average gas-powered lawnmower is about 85 decibels. A stadium or a concert is about 100 decibels. An emergency siren, 120 decibels, which is enough to damage your hearing immediately. In contrast, the average conversation is about 60 decibels. The hum of your refrigerator, 40 decibels. A quiet library, 30 decibels. 20 decibels is the sound of a ticking watch. Normal breathing is about 10 decibels. And zero decibels is the softest sound that can be heard by the human ear. Now, you may be wondering, okay, but why am I talking about this? Well, it's actually very fundamental to this channel. You see, from the very first day I started this channel, I've been talking about and filming outside. And I've noticed one annoyingly frustrating thing over and over again. Outside isn't nearly as quiet as you might think. There's a highway not too far from here, and Every once in a while I can hear the cars. I have been deep in the woods and heard the distant drone of cars on the highway. I have stopped filming countless times to let a jet go past. There's an airplane. Here comes an airplane. A lot of airplanes. Airplanes. There was one time deep in the backcountry of Colorado, I stopped to let a jet go by and as soon as it passed, another one started in. And then another and another until I kid you not, 21 jets flew by. 21 jet. That's not even the worst of it. The worst is that we're actually used to the noise. Hell, we even crave it. And all of this has me wondering, does natural quiet still exist in America? Is there anywhere left that has no sound of a distant highway, no planes flying overhead, no sound of Bluetooth speakers on the trails, or ATVs, or anything made by man? Is there a place where the only sound you hear is silence? And can I find it? To find out, I started looking for places that are the least likely to have human noise and commit myself to going to see, or at least hear them for myself, which led me to the center of Austin, Texas, of all places, to the University of Texas at Austin. And you might be thinking, how do you find silence in the middle of a city? Well, only with a multi-million dollar room specifically designed to block out noise. So it's really quiet. Uh, it's not as quiet as many chambers, and we can talk about why. That's Dr. Wilson. He said I could call him Preston. This room has been specifically engineered to keep the noise of the world outside. And I'm here because these rooms have been described as the quietest place on Earth. And they're wedge-shaped so that the sound that enters um, basically bounces back and forth into the um, back of the wedge there. And so uh, th that's where the sound goes. And um, the closest thing that you might find in nature would be basically uh, a very empty area with um, no reflectors anywhere. So you might imagine a lake bed, a dry lake bed, or even you know on the ocean where there's no nothing to reflect sound and all the sound can go straight up. They've also been rumored to be so quiet that they'll drive you insane. Now, I don't know about that, but either way, I thought I should experience it for myself. Yeah, so I mean, obviously people have said, you know, that you spend too much time on one of these things and stuff like that, that it, it'll drive you crazy. Do you, do you feel like there's any, any yeah, validity no, I, to that? I've heard what you, what, what, I've heard that as well. Um, yeah. So not for me, but uh, I have heard other people who claim that it's uncomfortable to be in here. Yeah. And um, I don't think it drives you crazy. Okay. I don't have any evidence of that. But yeah, there's definitely a, a feeling that you get just because it's unusual. Our brains aren't used to it, and if you kind of be really quiet, you'll start to sense that there's like a pressure uh, in your ears, so. So the anechoic chamber was neat to say the least, but at its heart, it's artificial. It's designed to only mimic what Dr. Wilson described as an open plane, where sound only leaves and is never bounced back. Now, what I wanna know is can I find a place like that in nature? Because last I checked, I didn't have millions of dollars to blow on an artificially quiet room. Plus, 
nature is healing and amazing and cheaper. The question is, where in the U.S. is least likely to have human noise? Now, I feel fairly confident I can get away from cars and urban noise if I walk far enough into the wild. That I'm not worried about. What I am worried about are airplanes. Is there anywhere left in the U.S. that you can go and not hear the sound of a plane flying overhead? So I did a little bit of research and I found this flight path model that Aaron Coblin created. This shows every flight over the U.S. in a typical day. And as you can see, there aren't many places that don't have airplanes. Most air traffic in the United States is headed inward. But if you go to the very edge of the country, there's far less air traffic and a better chance for natural silence. The biggest irony of this whole thing is I'm taking an airplane to try to get away from airplanes. I'm on my way to the Boundary Waters Canoe Area Wilderness. It is just a handful of miles from the Canadian border. It is about as close as you can get to not being in the United States without actually leaving the United States. And I chose Boundary Waters not just because it's got a good chance of little air traffic, but it is one of only two places in the United States that has been awarded Quiet Park status by Quiet Parks International. Part of the reason there's only two, it's kind of a, a twofold reason. One is that there's not many places that you can go to meet the criteria that we have set up for a wilderness quiet park. This is Matt Mickelson, Wilderness Director for Quiet Parks International. Which is, uh, in short, you need a dependable 15 minute noise-free interval. Can you hear that airplane? I hear it, but I don't see it. And when I tell people it's only 15 minutes, they're like, but that's nothing. Like there's tons of places you can go and not hear noise pollution for 15 minutes. Can you hear that? There's another airplane. Um, as someone who is doing the research, I can tell you it's just not true. It's even in our, yeah, even in the biggest wilderness areas that we have, even in places that are so remote when you look at a map, you still have air traffic flying over. You still have distant rumble from resource extraction. You still have all these other noise sources. Um, so that's one thing is that quiet is rare and quiet to the metric that we've developed, that 15 minute noise free interval, along with some other criteria we have set up, is incredibly hard to meet. Third airplane in the Boundary Waters. Good morning. I've been laying here, not wanting to get out of my sleeping bag, mainly because of how cold it is, and just been listening, and something interesting just happened. So, I've been laying here, birds have been chirping, singing, making all kinds of noises, and then an airplane flew overhead. And the moment the airplane noise started to echo through the area, all the birds stopped singing, and they haven't started back yet. I can't hear the airplane anymore, but it's like the airplane interrupted what they were doing. Like, I don't know what to do about that, because obviously I enjoy air travel. I enjoy being able to go places like the Superior National Forest so that I can enjoy places like this. But at the same time, I realize that it's, it's intrusive of nature. But I wish we just didn't just give up. That we wouldn't say, you know, like, well, that's the way that it is. That it's just going to be noisy. Airplanes are going to fly overhead. I wish we had some places that we could protect, not just from cars and automobiles and pollution and human development and all those things. Wild places that we would also protect from sounds intruding from above. With Boundary Waters ending up considerably louder than I expected, I decided to go to one of my favorite parks that also happens to be the birthplace of Quiet Parks International. The One Square Inch of Silence was an organization started by Gordon Hempton. And Gordon is a nature sound recordist, um, Emmy Award winning. And in his time uh, recording all over the world, one of the places he found that was really, really free from noise pollution was Olympic National Park, specifically the Ho Rainforest. The Ho Rainforest has um, got a lot of things going for it. Kind of the main 
fork of the Ho River. In order to get there, you drive a dead end road. There's no roads that transect and go across Olympic National Park. Um, the other is that there's not a lot of air traffic in the area. So it had a lot of things going for it, and Gordon thought, okay, well, let's recognize this place. But instead of saying Olympic National Park is, is quiet, uh, the idea was to recognize one square inch of Olympic National Park. The thought being that by protecting that one square inch from noise pollution, you're effectively protecting the whole park. I made a camp and I can already tell that this is not going to be the quietest park that I have visited. Not because of any man-made sound. I haven't heard an airplane all day long. But just because of the Ho River is not even a quarter mile that direction and I can just hear it raging. But you know what? It also doesn't bother me. It's soothing. It's a natural soothing sound. But I can tell you right now that if I get the dust bowl meter out, it's just not gonna be the quietest part. Any single noise intrusion can disqualify a park, which is the case with Olympic National Park. Um, if you are in a wilderness area and a fighter jet buzzes over you, we can't call that a quiet park. Um, so a single noise intrusion can disqualify a park. So I was sitting here packing up camp and I heard what sounded like a boat coming up the river. Now, I don't even think that's possible with the Ho River, but it's exactly what it sounded like. And so I grabbed the camera quickly, tried to turn it on so that you all could hear, and I had the audio turned off on my camera. And so I was trying to get you to, to hear that helicopter. And I wasn't even recording audio the entire time. And I ran out to the river just in case it was a boat coming up the river. And it turned out to be a helicopter coming up the valley. And that's something that I haven't gotten anywhere else. It's helicopters. And so on a beautiful day like today, I'm sure that it's very tempting for helicopter tour companies to come out and fly over the park to give people a bird's eye view. I know that's a real problem with the Grand Canyon. The Grand Canyon has got way too much air traffic. Helicopters flying up overhead and all that kind of stuff. And I really wish that they would do something to protect the parks from the sound of noise, the sound of aircraft. I'm out of breath from running. Other than the one low-flying helicopter, both Boundary Waters and Olympic seem to meet the requirements for quiet park status. A 15 minute interval of silence was dependable and despite how it might seem, both parks were remarkably quiet, but I still felt like we could do better. So I decided to try one last location further out than any of the other parks that I've visited. I am on my way to Big Bend National Park, one of the most remote, if not the most remote national parks in the entire continental US. To give you an idea how remote this park is, the nearest commercial airport, and for that matter, the nearest hospital is a five hour drive from the park. It is so far out of the way that if I can't find natural silence here, I'm not sure it can be found. Um, a lot of people kind of write off noise pollution as kind of like a whatever, you know, like these are a bunch of tree huggers who will find anything to complain about. When you're deep in the wilderness and you've hiked days and you're miles and miles away from the nearest road and miles away from the nearest human, that, that sort of experience of planes flying constantly overhead brings you out of that moment and brings you away from connecting with nature and connecting to the quiet. Um, I'm sure you can recall moments where you've been in total natural silence and it is an incredible experience. And just to be there witnessing nature at its most natural is something that changes you. It really does change the way that you move through the world. Um, and I think the more people that experience that, um, the happier we're all going to be. Okay. 
The sun has gone down behind the mountains. I've gotten up to just move around a little bit and that's gotten the flies away from me. And I notice that when I stand still, it's really quiet out here. Thank you for watching what has become my largest project yet. While I was filming this, my wife and I got to spend a weekend in Seattle, and we spent an afternoon at the Seattle Arboretum. And because this project was on my mind, I couldn't help but notice the sound of air traffic overhead. And at first I started to point it out to my wife, and she stopped me and said, don't ruin this for me the way that you've ruined it for yourself. <laughs> and so I didn't say anything else, but the entire time we were there, it was non-stop air traffic overhead. And so I tell you that because part of me hopes that now that you're aware of this, that I've ruined wild places for you. Only because if you take notice, then maybe together we can do something to help protect the last quiet places left in America. This video was completely unsponsored, but I'm grateful to Quiet Parks for their time and assistance that helped make it possible. If you want to donate to Quiet Parks and help them continue their mission to bring more awareness to this issue, as well as protect the last quiet places left in the world, you can donate through the links in the description. Please like, subscribe, and do all those other things. And as always, thanks for watching. You may have heard of one square inch of silence. What I got right here, this is my one square inch of shade. Oh, and it's blown away.